Macquarie perch are now a totally protected species of fish right across the state of Victoria. Now last week when the law came in and the news broke, I had quite a lot of people reaching out to me asking why. The general feeling from a lot of people is they're seeing more Macquarie perch in my YouTube videos. They're seeing more on other people's social, social media platforms. So we're seeing more and more Macquarie perch, so why close it now? So in this video, I just want to explain what is happening to the Macquarie perch. The Macquarie perch are a small native fish. They're actually classed as a large-bodied native fish, but they're one of the smaller large-bodied native fish. And they, they traditionally they're found in the middle to upper reaches of many of our waterways. In fact, in many of our waterways, many years ago, they were the most abundant spe fish species. And there were so many of them that back in the day, professional fishermen used to net them and, and measure their, their catch by the ton and then sell them to the fish market. They were a very prolific fish. And then they went down and down and down. There was less and less and less to the point that they almost became extinct. Now, at the end of this video, I'll explain what led to the demise of the Macquarie perch. But for now, let's just talk about the rules. Up until just recently, I think it was the 23rd of December, I think the law came in, you were allowed to catch Macquarie perch. But you were only allowed to catch one, and it had to be in Lake Dartmouth or its tributaries. You couldn't, they were already protected everywhere else in the state, except the upper Colobin Reservoir on the Colobin River over in the, uh, near Lake Epilock. You could catch them in the upper Colobin Reservoir, but that was a bit of a relic rule, a relic of the past. There hasn't been Macquarie perch seen in there for decades. So while the law said you could catch one or two out of there, I can't remember what it was, no one ever did because they're not there. So up until just recently, you were allowed to take a feed of Macquarie perch out of Lake Dartmouth, but it had to be in season within the bag limits and you could, within the size limits, sorry, and you could only have one. Up until I think it was 2017 or 2018, you could also target Macquarie perch in the Yarra River, but that was closed years ago. Let me explain why. The Macquarie perch, which were once so abundant, have their numbers have dwindled so much that they became extinct from most waterways in the state. The last, the last true native stronghold or natural stronghold of Macquarie perch is in Lake Dartmouth and its tributaries. There is also a stronghold or a stable population in the Yarra River, but that's not a natural population. They were put there back in the 1800s. The Macquarie Perch and Murray Cod were taken from the, the Murray-Darling catchment, most likely the Yay River, and taken up over the hill and put into the, uh, in, into the Yarra River. So let's exclude the Yarra River. What that means is that the Lake Dartmouth and its tributaries were the only place in Victoria where they still occurred naturally. Without being restocked, without being reintroduced, they were occurring naturally. So the Macquarie Perch in the Yarra River was closed, that fishery was closed, to protect it as a backup, just in case they went extinct from the, Dar from the, uh, from the Lake Dartmouth and its tributaries. Now, in recent years, there's been a lot of work to try and bring back Macquarie perch to their natural habitat. Places like the Ovens River, the King River, the Kiwa, the Mira Mira. Uh, down further, there's the Broken, the, uh, the Goulburn River. All of the rivers that run into the Murray-Darling Basement up in the headwaters here in Victoria had Macquarie perch in them, pretty much. So work, work was undertaken to try and bring them back. Now, unlike silver perch and golden perch, Macquarie perch can't be bred in captivity. In captivity, well, they can, but not consistently. It's much harder and much more finicky trying to get the temperatures right and the food right and the diet right. It's a much harder process, and it's very, very hit and miss. Now, it's so time critical that when they uh, when Macquarie perch are spawning, that what fisheries do, they go up above Lake Dartmouth, the last stronghold, and they go up there when the fish are spawning and they'll take a number of mature fish and take them to the Snobs Creek hatchery to uh, have their eggs incubated or whatever they do. I'm not a scientist, I don't know. But it's so time critical that they don't just put them in a foam esky and then drive back. They chopper them from Lake Dartmouth to the Snobs Creek hatchery in a helicopter and then they put them in, the, uh, in their tanks and do what they've got to do and get the eggs. And then they get lots of little fry, little Macquarie perch fry. They then, when those fry grow, they stock them into rivers like the Ovens River and, and other rivers. And that is why you're seeing so many more turn up on social media, including on my YouTube videos. 
It's not because they've fallen out of the sky. It's not because they've just come back from nowhere. It's because millions of dollars has been invested into research, into habitat restoration, into a whole heap of things to try and get them back. There's been, there's literally been millions of dollars involved in recovering the Macquarie perch. So those fish that you're seeing in my videos, they are the result of a lot of hard work. Things are looking good for Macquarie perch, but we're not out of the woods yet. I'm actually surprised that we still had a fishery in Lake Dartmouth. I'm surprised that wasn't closed many years ago. We used to go up there in the 1990s for the opening day of the Macca season, catch our feed of Macquarie perch, cook them around the camp. It was, they were beautiful eating fish. But the, uh, we didn't realise at the time there wasn't as much research done and as much education and knowledge to tell us just how, uh, how bad their numbers were. So I'm surprised that it wasn't closed years ago. So while you're seeing the news saying Macquarie perch have... Uh, the season's been closed, they've been um, totally protected species now, and you're, you're wondering why. Well, that's why, because they, they were open, but the, the Macquarie perch fishery was just hanging in by a thread anyway, so not much is changing in the world of fishing as far as Macquarie perch go. You're just not allowed to take your one fish a day from Lake Dartmouth anymore in season. Right, all that said, let's talk about why the Macquarie perch disappeared in the first place. It depends who you ask. Some people will just go straight to the trout. They, they, I call it, they play the trout card. They say the Maccas are all gone because of the trout. Trout have done everything wrong. People love to blame trout. The reality is trout may have had a negative impact on Macquarie perch, but that's not the only thing. There are so many things at play. And in fact, Lake Dartmouth, which happens to, and its tributaries, which happens to be the last stronghold of Macquarie perch, also happens to be one of Victoria's best trout fisheries. So the trout and the mackers have been thriving in the lake and in the rivers. They've been coexisting together for years without any problems. One of the biggest problems to Macquarie perch is lakes and dams. Lakes hinder the migration of Macquarie perch swimming upstream to spawn. The, uh, the Macquarie perch, they like to swim up and spawn and the lakes stop them swimming up. I've got a distraction, sorry. What you can hear there is a gang gang or a gang gang cockatoo, the black cockatoos with the red face. You find them up here in the hills in the same areas that you find Macquarie perch. Isn't that amazing? Anyway, let's get back on track. Lakes and dams are one of the biggest hindrances to Macquarie perch because they can't swim upstream and spawn. The ones that are already up above the lakes, they lay their eggs. Their eggs may need to float downstream and if they enter the lake, they die, they, they sink to the bottom, sediment falls on them and they, they, they die as well. So lakes are a huge thing, not just lakes, just weirs, lakes, weirs, any kind of man-made barrier is a, uh, is a big problem for Macquarie Perch. That's, that's one of the things that's led to their demise. Another really big problem or another thing that's led to their demise is habitat degradation, de-snagging streams. Over the years, many streams have had all the trees and the logs and everything pulled out of them to make the water flow better. But it took away the spawning, it took away the, the habitat, the, the cover, the hiding spots and spawning grounds and everything of the Macquarie perch. Not only did de-snagging the rivers cause problem, and, and another area of habitat degradation is riparian vegetation. And what that is, is the trees that go along the banks of the river. That is critically important for Macquarie perch. And in many, many areas, that was wiped out. That was wiped out and cattle could walk down and get a drink out of the creek. What that done was led to a lot of siltation and erosion. So we've got lakes preventing fish, creating barriers for fish migration during the spawning season. We've got a lack of riparian vegetation. We've got siltation now, all the sand in the water. We've stuffed the rivers. We have stuffed the rivers. And that is probably the biggest problem of the lot. Then there are other factors such as introduced fish, particularly redfin. They're a lot worse for Macquarie perch than what trout are. And trout will no doubt have had an impact as well. And of course we can't forget the old timers back in the day that didn't know any better that were harvesting Macquarie perch by the ton. That can't have helped. I've seen photos of literally four or five hundred Macquarie perch just all up hanging on strings and everything that were caught by professional anglers and, and sold to fish markets. That wouldn't have helped either naturally. So, so folks, that's what's happening with the Macquarie perch. That's why they disappeared. That's why they've just been put off limits. Let's just hope that the guys at the Arthur Ryler Institute in Victoria and any other scientists, any other people involved, Native Fish Australia, of course, Victorian Fisheries are doing a great job. All these propeller heads, let's just hope that they can continue the great work they're doing so that we can see the Macquarie Perch really bounce back. And I really hope that one day in my lifetime, we can see an open season on them again and much more widespread so that we can all go out and enjoy a feed of them. That's the long-term vision, hopefully. 
I hope this has cleared a few things and answered a few questions. Thank you all very much for watching.